Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for another IP Day webinar Wednesday. I'm June Rawl, the director for Florida IP Day, and I'm happy that all of you are able to participate today in our webinar titled Community Partners, Making Strides for Multi-Generational Learning Through Adult Education. Today, you're gonna hear from Dr. Jeff Arnott and his colleagues from Osceola County on how they really developed great partnerships within their community to really um, access some great outcomes. So before we get started, I'm gonna just remind you of a few housekeeping rules. You all are in listen only mode. We would love to hear some questions or comments that you have for our facilitators today. If you would do that, please enter them in the Q&A section that you option that you have on your screen. Remember that all IP Day webinars are in archived and will be available within 24 hours. Jeff, I'm gonna turn it over to you and your colleagues as you begin your webinar for us today. And thank you so much for facilitating this for us. Hey, great, thank you, June. And uh, thank you, Epday, for uh, allowing us to, um, to tell our story here in Osceola County about a wonderful partnership that I believe could be replicated in many different ways, not necessarily with the Urban League and others, uh, but it could be with anybody. And, um, and really starts as a, just a, just a, what I would consider just um, a basically just a, you know, us exploring some problems that we had, how we can fix them, and how we can partner with some of our partners. Um, anyway, let me give, let me introduce our uh, panelists, and I'll let them chime in and tell us a little bit about what they do. Donna um, Odell, I mean, Rain Odell, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Donna Rain Odell. I work in Osceola County with Dr. Arnott. I'm one of the resource specialists uh, for CTE and adult education. And before this, which is where all of um, the uh, groups together, I was at, with Adult Learning Center Osceola. So we have um, had a great partnership with Glenn, and I'll go ahead and send it over to him. Okay. Glenn, um, Glenn Gilzine, uh, wonderful partnership here. Glenn, tell us a little about yourself and your role at the Central Florida Urban League. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. And, and thank you, Dr. Jeff, for uh, this great opportunity. And thank you, Donna, for your partnership. Uh, my name is Glenn Gilzine, President and CEO of the Central Florida Urban League. And prior to, I was a Pinellas County School Board member. And uh, prior to that, I had a, a short term uh, over at the Florida Department of Education. So I'm um, really excited about today's conversation and talk about our partnership. Okay. And I'm Jeff Arnott. I oversee all the technical programs. That's our high school CTE programs, middle school as well, our adult education center, which is ALCO. And I oversee um, Osceola Technical College as well. So I do have a wide umbrella here, um, but I am very passionate about adult ed. That's kind of where I got my administrative experience rolling and so forth. I'm in the Florida Keys and of course in Brevard County. And now here, what I consider home, um, Osceola County itself. Let's tell you about the little the early days of how this developed. This all kind of happened a little bit um, with our superintendent, Dr. Deborah Pace, who's absolutely fantastic. She actually um, came to my office one day and said, "Jeff, uh, um, I, I, I asked the county commissioners um, for a little bit of money, or there was a um, a conversation about it, how they really wanted to help the schools out." And she immediately said, "Well, I really want to try to do something with multi generational learning." And, I, and she said, I just really thought that maybe we could give some money to ALCO or OTAC or the community to try to get some micro-credentialing and some short-term trainings um, and so forth um, so um, we can upskill the community, which hence our word skill up Osceola kind of came from that, um, where she recommended it. I, to be honest with you, I almost burst it out in tears that the superintendent came to me and asked me how they could support adult education with some money that came in. Um, I thought that was just fantastic. But anyway, we decided to really look and we, we worked with Alco, we worked with Donna and we worked with Michelle, our wonderful assistant principal and Karen Combs, our wonderful principal over there to determine how we could recruit some adult education students and also other people in the community. This wasn't all adult ed folks. These were folks that were affected by the pandemic and get them some micro credentials. And then we said, 
um, let's do it. So um, we, we, um, we mostly had adult ed students. We, got, we had a lot of students earn credentials in Microsoft, um, the medical assistant and NCCER in the construction trades. So these students were actually doing IETs before IETs were even cool, or you know how it was when that IET stuff first came out. I think everybody was just kind of wondering how to navigate through that. I think we've gone a long way since then. So we basically ran it as community education just to make sure that we weren't doing anything wrong, that we found out that we were doing a lot of stuff right. So it kicked off really, really well. And that project itself, and Donna, tell me if I'm wrong here. I think we have about 60 people that actually earn credentials during that time period. This happened right in the fall of 2020. And I believe we had, um, we had about 60. Chime in if I'm right or wrong there, Donna. Yeah, um, I think it might have been a little bit less than 60, but pretty close. So uh, we, yes. Okay, great. And um, basically this project, all turned into how the urban league. And I'll tell you a little bit. I know Glenn sometimes blushes when I tell this story. But anyway, this was such a success. And I remember telling Dr. Pace, I got to do more of this. And anyway, I was coming back from a University of Florida football game after LSU beat us. And I come into the, into the turnpike uh, exit and the turnpike uh, rest area. And then I knew somebody, because this is where, you know, really partnerships work. I knew the person he was with who was a legislative aide for one of our representatives. And he introduced me to Glenn. And next thing you know, uh, we're calling each other and talking about some of the work he does at the Urban League and some money he received. And I'll let him talk a little bit about that and how, um, and how he could help us out. Anyway, Glenn, you wanna talk a little bit about the background of how the, your side of the story of, of uh, the micro-credentialing you were doing throughout Central Florida? Absolutely. And I, I still don't understand why Dr. Jeff's number one goal is to embarrass me. But other than that, I will just take it and with stride and run with it. So yes, we are avid University of Florida football fans and we go to the games uh, practically every Sunday. But besides that, one of the goals of the Urban League is to end generational poverty. And we do that through a vertical, uh, vertical integration approach, which is the multi-generational um, perspective that uh, Dr. Jeff is speaking of. We always see the student as the anchor. So through after-school programs, STEM programs, but we said, what if we could do something where in order for your child to uh, participate in urban league after-school programs or the um, Dr. Jeff's uh, after-school programs that the parent has to be uh, involved from a perspective of that they need to sign up and participate in some type of upskilling opportunity. And if we think about the beginning of the pandemic where um, depending on where in the state of Florida you're from, we were all impacted by COVID. But Central Florida being that tourism is ground zero and the heart of our economy, we saw the brunt of it more than anyone else. So we saw this as an opportunity to really help people pivot and get into the opportunity, the jobs of today and tomorrow. So with that said, um, we were aggressive. Um, we're the first ever urban league uh, uh, organization in the country because there's 95 of us across the country to actually offer a Microsoft Office specialist credential and then partnering with Dr. Jeff and team and Ms. Donna we were able to say, okay, instead of us trying to do this on our own, why don't we collaborate and bring our resources that the Urban League is really good at, um, which is the wraparound services. How do we use that as a way to keep people in the class and keep them going, especially during the hardest, the hardest part of the pandemic? So it was really a true community base where the, the school district and the adult education um, uh, community was able to do what they do great. And then the Urban League was able to do what it does great, which is the wraparound services. And then collectively we were able to transform like literally hundreds of lives um, across Osceola School District. Thank you, Glenn. I'm trying to move my screen here. It's not letting me. There we go. But basically we solved the problem through um, on partnership. You know, one of the things, you know, with adult education, um, we just really can't afford after school care um, and so forth. So um, Glenn actually provided um, um, us with some resources to have a place for children to go um, on our site while the parents were receiving some of these services. 
And some of these sort of students actually were getting served by adult education as well. We got some students enrolled that said, hey, we need their GED. Well, let's hook you up over here. Um, or they you know, needed some more language uh, instruction. Let's get you over here to our adult ESOL program. But over on the other side, it was more than just playing around. We actually had a real great teacher, Chris Tolliver, who does a wonderful job um, teaching the students some hardcore STEM instruction building things, building robots, having really a good fun and learning at it at the same time. And that was going on while the parents were receiving their instruction. We even found out with, by really talking to the parents, the parents were telling us that their kids were dragging them to, the, uh, to, their, to their Microsoft training so they could go get STEM instruction. So really we did have a top-notch program over there. I mean, um, Chris is a talented instructor, no question about that. Um, so it really, really did help it. So we were really doing that. And Glenn was targeting, uh, asked us to target students at a certain age between grades three and five, because you know, three is where, uh, you know, if those folks who have an elementary school background know that grade three is the uh, the breaking point of where sometimes if the if the reading instruction is not there, they may struggle throughout school. So I thought it was just a wonderful opportunity. Um, also, like I say, we solved the problem. And Donna, chime in anytime you need here. I think these these data is what you gave me here. But we offered nine classes during the 21-22 school year through four locations in Osceola High School. We had one location at Point Siena High, one at Flora Ridge, um, and also our main campus. And I think there was one more at St. Cloud High, I believe, at night as well. Um, the partnership itself served 225 adult students. Anyway, Donna, you want to talk a little bit about how you targeted them, how you put these classes together, how you found our fantastic teachers who really wanted to work with these students. You have at it. Sure, absolutely. So uh, one of the things like uh, Dr. Arnett said prior is that we did do a STEM focus for the uh, students and it was targeted third through fifth grade. The first time it kind of was stretched a little bit into middle school, but uh, it also had a very heavy influence of literacy support. So we um, focused on, you know, instilling those different uh, literacy skills, but we did it through the STEM education, which is what really made those children interested in uh, wanting to come back. For the students, the way we contacted them, you know, we advertised through social media and uh, it wasn't super, wasn't a lot of turnout at first, but our district has um, has Remind. And if you know what Remind is, it's where teachers can go ahead and post things and send text messages out to parents and our district has a district remind so they sent out the different advertisements for these classes through that and we had when I say hundreds we actually had hundreds and hundreds of people sign up for these programs so you know we did it through a lottery system where they were randomly selected and we called down the list and as long as they were able to commit to those times at the different locations, we tried to get it close to either where they worked or, you know, near their house. But we went and got them signed up and everything, uh, like they said, was completely free because of the partnership that we had with Urban League. Yes. And it was uh, really, really good as well. And yeah, if there's one thing you take out of this webinar is if your district has Remind, use it. It's really helped us with our enrollments with adult education, some of our OTEC. Um, you know, um, classes, if we have a particular need, we need like 14 more stuff, we'll say like target this group, um, let's get it out there. And we do literally, I think that Donna called me up and said, we have 900 people registered for this program. <laughs> and it was like, well, that's not a bad problem. I guess that's, that's a good problem. Um, but, uh, but some of this also is, uh, and we've evolved a little bit since the lottery system. We actually do do a little more interviewing now, try to find out which students we feel would be the good fit at the time. At first it was, it was just a you know, just a little bit of trying to see what happens and see what works. And that's also true with Glenn and us. Um, we did the same thing. Well, well, we'll give you this, but if you do this, then we even evolved our contract a little bit to really meet the, both, the needs of both of us a little bit more as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. And how it worked, basically Donna kind of went over this. Alco recruited the students. Um, uh, many were enrolled at Alco. A lot of the students were. We targeted um, students who had children in grades three or five. But as Donna mentioned, there was some exceptions. Uh, maybe a couple middle schoolers, maybe a little ones. We didn't do infants. There's a lot of licensure stuff with that. So 
definitely don't try to do infants or anything. And also the Urban League um, provided the career services as Glenn talked about that type of stuff. I know there's one lady in there who actually got advanced at Universal Studios thanks to thanks to Glenn and his work and so forth. And also the Urban League paid us when students completed and earned their credentials or completed the program. That's kind of where we got to, because it gives us accountable as well. So we, I, I'm a supporter of that. I mean, this is all, some of this is taxpayer money. We want to be true to taxpayer money. And also we want to be true to our partnership. Urban League went to bat for us. We feel we got to go to bat for them. And also the Urban League paid for the cost of the teachers for the children's programming in the evening, you know, whatever the teacher's hourly rate was or whatever we pay for them to uh, to go in and give that, um, that really top-notch instruction itself. Also, industry certifications earned, and I think this is a highlight of all the students we served so far, and I believe you, Donna, tell me if we have an update, we may have one. Um, the adult education students earned 131 um, certifications last this past year, and we're still testing students, mostly at our, our Point Siena area. And the certifications that were earned were some Microsoft certifications and ESB. And I know people are going like, what's ESB? That's the Entrepreneur and Small Business Certification that we were given over at uh, Floor Ridge, I believe. And also we have a wonderful new business academy at Point Siena High School. We're looking at this, you know, the principal there, Jeff Schwartz, does a wonderful job. Um, of, you know, how we can use this program to get the parents involved of the kids that are in the business academy of how they can support their children. And we're also looking at it as a recruiting tool so the little kids can see their older brothers and sisters in the business academy, how we can really once again bridge together that multi-generational that multi gap. I think that's important to note there as well. Donna or Glenn, you have anything to chime in on that one? Um, Yes, I just want to just make one slight uh, uh, modification. We were able to also, yes, we did receive some dollars from the state, but we also supported the work that you guys are doing through private philanthropy as well. Yes. So what was great about this partnership that I hope everyone else can look at is that having a community-based organization like an Urban League and et cetera, we were able to go to say JP Morgan Chase or Bank of America and explain to them how this works as well. Um, and then having them also donate. So although some of the taxpayer dollars are restrictive, having the unrestricted dollars that can allow for the um, creativity that's needed for our kids in the after school program is vital. Uh, but no, I, you hit it on the nail. And this is also like, we're so proud that we were able to do um, 131 uh, individuals who are under certification. And it's just, it's, it's just a true blessing. Yeah, and it's great. And you bring up a great point too, Glenn, about that private money. And even for us to accept private money, it's hard to do. Glenn and those and those community partners like the Urban League, they have a lot more flexibility to do that with their with their with their nonprofit status. We're not a nonprofit; we're a government agency, so it's a little bit harder for us. But it's real easy for us to create a contract, create a partnership, bill them, and they send us money. And we put it in our account. It's real easy for us to do that. So I think that's part of it, you know, how you line up, you have a mission, you have a goal, you have a, something you need to solve. These folks basically can help you get there, like the Urban League and so forth. Don, anything on the Microsoft or ESB certification? Really quick, and I'm hoping that Glenn can help me with this. The great thing about this partnership is, you know, they do get their certifications, like their different Microsoft Office Specialist certifications in um, entrepreneurship and small business, but it extends past that. Uh, and that's what is great about um, the partnership with Urban League is because even though they're no longer a quote unquote student in these classes, they are still getting benefits from Urban League um, with different types of support. Glenn, if you could kind of mention a little bit of what you do on that end. Yeah, absolutely. So just last week for the ESB student, we had a round table with Mr. Chip Webster, who helped um, basically bring um, uh, a couple of companies to the NYSE. And then as entrepreneurs, they had a chance to sit down and have a fireside chat with entrepreneurs, uh, an entrepreneur himself, a successful one that actually took a company from scratch to uh, IPO. And what's awesome about the, uh, our relationship and partnership is now we're giving the tools to individuals. The other aspect that we have is like this individuals in the Microsoft class, they're all sitting down with our financial education um, uh, uh, coach and career coach. 
And what that does, is it helps them find out what are the other aspects. So we have students um, who are interested in purchasing a home and we're now able to connect them with a financial institution and provide, again, the wraparound services after the class has ended. We're sitting down and helping them build out a, a financial roadmap. So now that their career is where it needs to be, now we're truly ending generational poverty because we're helping them get access to the tools to be competitive in today's uh, housing market. So those are just some prime examples um, that we, we're doing and helping individuals utilizing the Urban League brand going forward. Great, great. Well, let's, I think I got some pictures here we can share. Ah. My computer is not wanting to advance the slide. There we go. Outcomes. Oops, let me go back just to make sure. Okay, great. Outcomes. I could tell you some of the, I, these are kind of incidental things that occurred because of this. It has made our adjustments here at adult education at ALCO easy, very easy peasy. So now every staff already kind of know what they need to do, get the standards, do this, let's get an industry credential. So we've actually started several IETs, not with Glenn's group, but with a different with other folks. In fact, we are going to in fact, Glenn, there's some great news coming. Once we get this adjusted, we'll probably be able to serve more students, probably with less money. I just want to throw that out there. Um, because we'll be able to, uh, you know, use the IET system. And also adult education students want these credentials. There's one thing I learned, and I learned this from my doctorate, but I also learned this from this project. Adult education students, you ask them, hey, do you want ESB certification or Microsoft? All their hands go up. It's pretty easy sell. That's one thing I definitely learned, especially with the adult ESL, ESL crowd. And also there was evidence, once again, um, that, uh, that children were encouraging their parents to come to class, once again, doing that. And we really got some great ideas from the students themselves when we interviewed them. Um, they were saying, hey, we would love to have a class where, you know, where our son and daughter comes into the class while we're learning Microsoft together. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that's something I think we'll probably try real soon. Um, you know, maybe they do some STEM instruction one day, but one day they're coming in with their parents and working on a project. I could see that really taking off well, or parents working with, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, maybe coming up with some type of business plan together. And I know we're wanting to expand some of these into the medical sciences and some other, um, some other ones as well that I think could really take off itself. Future partnership, we're going to use this to create IETs at lower cost for the urban league. I even put it in writing here for you, Glenn, that will concentrate on services for younger students of the participants and career services. Um, you know, one of the things we're looking at too for the young children is, is one day maybe they have STEM and then the other day they come to class, they do some type of literacy project where they're creating a book or a novel or something of that nature where they're actually working collaboratively together on a particular project of interest to them. So it does cover some of those literacy skills, but it also covers some of those STEM and math skills that they would get over in the science part. We feel that could be a real hook for children. And plus we'll be able to hit all learners as well. A kid who struggles in science might really like the, uh, the creative part of creating a, a storyline. Um, for instance, for a book that they would publish, things like that. Good stuff coming out of this. And here's some of the successes. In fact, you can see Glenn there. He's in a couple of those pictures. This was Glenn. And Glenn, we are very grateful for this when you invited the lottery secretary for Florida, who I believe sits on the governor's cabinet, to come by and really check out their program to see how they could potentially use this for something else. So we thought that was really good. And our teachers are in here, we got Miss Martinez in there um, and everything else. He really helped out the kids. So Donna and Glenn, I tell you, this was an emotional day. I think we all teared up on this day. If you guys want to talk a little bit about this. I'll go ahead and chime in a little bit because it was kind of emotional. We, at least definitely that first class, um, you know, we didn't really know exactly how this was going to turn out. We all had high hopes and we just didn't realize that it was going to be as successful as it was because, you know, the students that we have there, the adults um, in particular, just the stories that they had that led them to wanting to take this class and so thankful that we had this opportunity. I know Dr. Arnott mentioned it before, but there was one girl named Winnie and she 
was like, I wanted to quit and I didn't want to come back anymore. And my son said, no, no, you know, I want to continue to come back. So, you know, she was coming because her son was having so much fun in the literacy and STEM classes. Um, and, you know, we had another student, Maria, who she basically told us, you know, you brought you brought life back to my my family. She recently lost her husband a couple of months prior to taking this class. And, you know, she felt kind of lost. And this got her back into the right direction to, um, you know, start a new career possibly and just, you know, move on and forward with her daughter. So it was a really, really, every every class is unique and just everyone's very thankful for what Urban League has provided for them. Please chime in, Glenn. Yeah, and I would just piggyback off of that. It's just what there's phrases that we use, which is the multi generational learning environment. But until you see it, until you hear one of the parents say, "For prior to me coming to class, where my daughter is helping me prepare for my exam, while vice is vice versa," I'm seeing my daughter be more engaged in her work because she sees mom actually doing it. And when I tell you that brought me so much joy because as a former school board member that creates policy, that created policy in the past and works and advocate for this type of work, but then to see it firsthand, it truly is life-changing, not for me, but for the people that the, the, that mom interacts with every day. The young child that now sees her mom doing it, she's going to have a positive educational experience that she's going to be able to touch and just think about the multitude of people that that one family is going to be a nucleus for so many other people that they touch throughout their lifetime if we can do that and as they say in the business world or finance world it's like compound interest if we can constantly do that just think about how many lives that we'll be able to transform and knowing the work that we do is all about transformational change this is it. This is a prime example of it. And again, it's just an honor to be a part of this. And I'm just grateful for our partnership. Yeah. And I could tell you the teachers even involved here with Ms. Martinez and Ms. Regatta, uh, I could tell you, I would never have a problem with getting them to do it again. Um, it's one thing about it. You talk about a recipe for teacher retention as well. Um, these are teachers that will line up and do it any day of the week um, and so forth like that, that their experience with it was so positive as well. Now, don't get me wrong. These are both, they were both fantastic teachers, but at the end of the day, it really does uh, really engages that. I know one of our teachers at Point Sienna High, I was talking to him and he was uh, like, man, just line me up anytime, man. I'll be more than happy to do it. I really had more fun with that. Even on my fun days, I had more fun with that than my fun days I have as an educator and stuff. So you really get to see that spark in, uh, in educators' eyes as well. And I can tell you, I cried that day too. And uh, I think I'm a pretty tough guy um, and so forth. That was, a, that was a good day. I don't have many of those crying days. So, um, and of course, um, and here's our contact information as well. Definitely email me, um, email Glenn, email Donna, if you have any questions. If you also just want to continuously see some of our good work. Now, I'm, not, I'm doing more than just promoting our Twitter accounts here, um, but I do post a lot of pictures on there and post a lot of stories about some of the stuff that's going on at Alco um, when it comes to adult education. So please check us out on Twitter, check Glenn out on Twitter, and of course our program, Alco itself. And Adon, if you have a Twitter account, share it with everybody. We'll be more than happy to promote yours as well. Um, but those are, uh, but like I said, definitely follow those and everything else. But, but basically, I just wanted to say that um, it really has made a big difference. The number of students that have completed is really, really high. Over 50% of the students who start, finish, they go to the end. Uh, vast, like I said, 100 and some certifications. I just really can't um, say it, say more about this. This definitely has higher retention than most, than, than most things So, and everything else. So only thing I see is our partnership growing and really refining it just a little bit more each time just to make it that much better. So... Any closing remarks, uh, Mr. Gilzine or Mrs. Rain O'Dell? Once more, I would just, oh, go ahead. Nope, nope, no. Nope. After you, go ahead. I would just say thank you so much for the opportunity to, for us to serve our community. And thank you so much for just believing that our families can uh, get a hand up. Um, and together, we're truly ending generational poverty. 
So thank you. All right. Is there any questions out there? All I, was, oh, all I was going to say is if there's anybody that wants to do something along this line, maybe you have a partnership with somebody, you know, please reach out to me. I can, I can tell you all of the, the tricks of the trade and all of the um, share all of our, our glows and grows in developing this partnership. So, you know, if there's anything that we can do to help you with your partnerships and your community, please feel free to reach out to us. It really has been a great experience. No problem. No, I think so too. In fact, yeah, I can tell you this much too. I'm trying to advance the slide. There we go. I can also tell you this too. I was at uh, the superintendent strategic planning meeting uh, yesterday where, where she gives it to the board and, and all the district administrators were in there, you know, that type of day. And she mentioned the highlights of the school district this past year. And of course, uh, we have had some highlights here, no question about it. But one of them she mentioned was was the community partnership and the adults that were getting industry certification through partnerships like the Urban League and so forth like that. So I just also want to say too, it does it does get the attention of, of folks here locally as well. Um, it's more than just IET points to me. It's more than just uh, just uh, checking things off the boxes. I think it's also it's it's helped us become more creative and it's also I think changed lives and also. Um, when you have pay grades above you telling you how much, how great adult education is doing in your community um, at a school district or a college, that's a good day. Um, so we're, I was very, very grateful for that. So um, I will say I have a very supportive school district here and I have a very supportive team. And of course we have very supportive partners themselves. And June, if you need anything, it says give your feed, uh, if day your feedback. So take it from there, June. Okay, thank you so much. You will see a slide that comes up on your screen. We would love to hear your feedback about the webinar today. And while you do that, wow, I just have to congratulate you on all of the efforts of developing these strong partnerships with people that you have done. You have really changed lives and I really got goosebumps throughout the presentation too. So really from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. With that, yeah. I will remind you that next Wednesday, our next webinar will be about uh, student performance in IET and really how do you assess those student performance measures in IET. So you won't want to miss it. But again, Jeff, Donna, Glenn, thank you so much for helping us out today and providing some really great information to us all in the field. Thank you, June.